On this week's Emily Now episode, we're going to be talking about mortgage insurance. It's been in the news quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, and so we thought it was important to bring you up to date to let you know what's happening and what it means for you. As well, we're going to walk you through an example of somebody that purchased a home, committed to purchasing the home, only to find out that the appraisal came in significantly below, and uh, you can hear how we were able to help them deal with it. So stay tuned. My name is Dylan Gallagher, founder of EmilyNow.ca. I'm a finance guy that for the past 18 years has been helping people and businesses get the mortgage or loan that they need so that they can do more. These Emily Now episodes are meant to help you understand a little bit more about mortgages and loans and some of the things that if you knew, maybe you could make better decisions. If you made better decisions, that maybe you'd have some more money. We're hopeful that with all that extra money that you might be able to save for the future, maybe invest those funds in new opportunities or give the money back to the community around you. But in either regard, we hope that you find these Emily Now episodes helpful. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Emily Now Canada. You can like us on Facebook. You can find us at Google+. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss one of these episodes again in the future. With every episode, we try to cover a range of topics, and today we're talking about mortgage insurance. So the first question that I'm going to address is, why do you need mortgage insurance? And just before we get into that, I want to make sure I, I define something for you. Mortgage insurance is not the insurance that you buy in the event of death. And so if something were to happen uh, to you or, or to your spouse, that uh, an insurance policy would pay off your mortgage. That's not the kind of mortgage insurance we're talking about. That's important insurance, but that's not what we're discussing. The mortgage insurance that I'm discussing right now is the insurance that a lender or a bank will make you get if you don't have enough of a down payment. And that insurance is designed to protect the lender in the event that you stop making your payments. And so it used to be many, 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 many years ago that in order for, you, for somebody to purchase a home, they had to have a substantial down payment, oftentimes half of what the home was worth. So if you were purchasing a home for $500,000, you would have to have cash of $250,000 to even be able to go to the bank and ask them to lend you the other $250,000. But as life went on and as the populations grew, it was becoming obvious to the government that not everyone was ever going to have that kind of money available to purchase homes and the price of homes had continued to increase as well. So the government uh, said to the banks, look, we need to stimulate activity in the, we, we need to help more people become homeowners. And the banks said, well, that's great, but we're not prepared to take on additional risk. We feel that if we're going to lend somebody half of what a home is worth, that that's probably good enough for us. And the government said, well, what if we insured the mortgage for you. So bank, if you lent these homeowners more money so that they required a smaller down payment, that we will protect you in the event that that homeowner doesn't make their payments. So that's a very simplistic definition of, of what mortgage insurance is and how it came to being. But why do you need it? You need it because without it, many people would not be able to own or afford a home. Uh, if you think about it, uh, people putting down 5% or 10% or 15% wouldn't have the opportunity to purchase a home if mortgage insurance did not exist. And so uh, what we've noticed over the, the course of the last couple of years is that the mortgage insurance rules have changed and many people aren't really familiar with what many of those changes are, but it doesn't change the fact that you need it because without it, you may not be able to even purchase a home. Banks are only prepared to lend people so much money. They're not prepared to take crazy risks. And on one hand, uh, because they hold our money, we, I think we, we want to see them do that. We don't want them taking risks with our money. Um, but by the other, on the other hand, we, we want to see people own homes. Uh, home ownership is 
probably one of the largest decisions that many people will ever make and so mortgage insurance allows that to happen. So why do you need it? You need it because uh, without it you may not be able to purchase the home uh, that you want. It's important to note that the largest insurance company in Canada is CMHC and that's a federal corporation but you may not know there are also two private insurers in the country. One is called Genworth, the other one is Canada Guarantee Mortgage. CMHC is the most popular, by far the largest, but these other two insurers, they're able to help as well. So uh, why is that important for you to know? Because if you're looking uh, to purchase a home and you don't have at least 20% as a down payment, then you're going to need to get mortgage insurance. But the mortgage insurers all have their own rules for who they will give mortgage insurance to. Now, generally speaking, most people can, can, can apply for through their bank and get the mortgage insurance that, that, that they're going to require. But in the event that CMHC decides, you know what, we don't really like the property, there's something about the borrower's financial situation that we're not comfortable with, so we're not going to insure this mortgage, the bank has the option to use the other two insurers in the marketplace as well. And so it's important for you to know if you're working with a banker, a mortgage broker, or a mortgage specialist, that you have other, have other options if you need them. So mortgage insurance is important. It's not insurance that protects you in the event of death for your mortgage to be paid off, but rather it protects the lender in the event that you stop making your payments and the bank uh, is looking at realizing a loss on the home they will exercise the insurance policy that you paid for to make sure that they're able to get their money back. Our second question today is, how does mortgage insurance actually work? So mortgage insurance, again, protects the lender in the event that you stop making payments, but the premium on that policy you pay for as the borrower. And the, the amount of the premium is based on the amount of, of your down payment. And so based on how much you're putting down, 5%, 10%, 15 or 20%, a premium is added to the mortgage. So here's a couple of examples for you. If you were going to put 5% down on a brand new property, your premium would be 3.15% of the mortgage amount. If you were going to be putting down 10%, your premium would be 2.4%. And if you were going to be putting down 15% on the purchase of a new home, your premium would be 1.8%. And you might say, great, Dylan, lots of percentages there, but can you translate that into some real math so that I can better understand it? Okay, let's say that you're looking to borrow $500,000. That's the mortgage amount that you're looking for. If you had 5% to put down, your mortgage premium would be $15,750. If you were looking to borrow $500,000 and your down payment was going to be 10% of whatever the purchase price was, then your premium would be $12,000. And if you were looking to put down 15% and get a $500,000 mortgage, your premium would be $9,000. So what does that mean? That amount of money, that premium, is added to the principal balance of your mortgage and then amortized over 25 years or 20 years, whatever the amortization is that you picked for your mortgage. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you added a $15,000 insurance premium to your mortgage, you end up paying interest on that premium through the entire amortization. So it does cost you more than just the amount that's being added to your mortgage. In fact, with the way mortgages are structured, basically the first half of the payments you make over, if you get a 25 year mortgage, the, the very first half of the payments are pretty much all interest and you really don't start paying down a lot of principal until the, the second half of the mortgage or in, until you pass the halfway mark. And so if you have a mortgage insurance premium added to your balance, that's just an additional amount of money that you end up paying interest on. And so it, 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 there's a cost to getting mortgage insurance, certainly. There's a cost to not having enough of a down payment to purchase a home. And for some people, it's not a big deal. Um, they say, well, you know, I'm very comfortable living in the city that I'm in, that the property values are going to increase, and, and I'll be able to make sure I can cover off 
that cost. But it's certainly something to think about. I was chatting with a client this week who was asking uh, about mortgage insurance and, and my comment was, well, if you don't need it, don't take it because it, there, there's a cost to it. Uh, you do pay interest and of course interest isn't money that you ever get back and you not don't necessarily realize any value out of it. And so if you need mortgage insurance, make sure you really need it and that you don't have a different way of putting the down payment together so that you can avoid that premium. We're going to walk through an example that we saw come up this week through emilynow.ca where someone had decided to purchase a home and because they were confident that they had great credit, they had a great job, they, had, uh, they, they figured their, their finances were on pretty solid ground, that they went ahead and removed conditions. And that's always uh, <laughs> not a good decision unless you know for sure that you're going to be okay. So here's kind of how the math shook out. They had um, $65,000 to use as a down payment. They had made an offer to purchase a home that was listed for $650,000 and they were looking for a mortgage of $585,000. So came through Emily, put their information together. We were able to uh, help them figure out which bank was going to approve them based on their score. And so uh, that went really well and we of course would encourage you to use emilynow.ca. But in this particular case, uh, because the purchaser had removed conditions, uh, the bank decided that they wanted to get an appraisal on the property to confirm that the $650,000 that the client was, was paying for this property, that the property was in fact worth that. So sure enough, they get the appraisal, uh, it comes back, and uh, the appraisal was $600,000, not the $650,000 that the homeowner had agreed to buy the home for. So what's the problem with that? Banks will only lend on the lower of either the purchase price or the appraised value. And so notwithstanding that the homeowner had said they were going to buy this property for $650,000, the reality is the bank said, well, we don't really care that's what you're going to buy it for. We believe it's only worth $600,000. So instead of giving you that mortgage for $585,000 that you were looking for, we're only going to give you a mortgage for $570,000. So what's the implication of that? Well, all of a sudden the borrower had to come up with more money because the amount of money that the bank wouldn't give them, they now had to come up with on their own. And so it made a stressful situation that much more stressful. They didn't realize and they, they weren't getting very good guidance from the, pe the, the real estate agent that they were working with to not remove conditions uh, until they knew that they were going to be to be okay. And worse than that, and this is this happens from time to time, but there was no condition in the in the purchase contract for the the new owner to get an appraisal. Again, why is that a big deal? Well, if you know you need an appraisal for your property, you want to make sure that in your purchase agreement you request access to the property because in this particular case, the person who was selling the property said, no, I'm not going to let the appraiser into the house. Uh, you didn't put it in your purchase agreement. You waived conditions. So as far as I'm concerned, it's your problem to deal with. Now, the real estate agent was able to, to sort of work some magic and make it happen. But in addition to um, the problems of the difference in purchase price and value, even before that, the purchaser couldn't even get in to get an appraisal. So this does happen. Um, obviously the advice is make sure that you make your offers subject to an appraisal and in a rising market this is oftentimes when we see a, a situation happen where someone's prepared to pay more than a property is worth on an appraised value and the reason for that is that all appraisers do when they go to the market to get you an appraisal is they look at the last the most recent sales for the type of property that you have so if you have a two-story home um, on a nice, you know, well-manicured street, what they do is they go to the MLS system and they try to find other two-story homes on nice streets in your neighborhood to figure out what they sold for. And then they basically average the values and tell you, here's what your home should be worth. So when the market is rising, like it is in, in some places in Canada right now, it's quite conceivable that the price you offer on a property today may not be able to appraise out because there aren't enough sales yet that have, have closed to show the appraiser that the home is actually worth that. So 
Not a huge deal. I mean, this doesn't happen on 10 out of 10 files, but certainly we see it on a handful where someone is prepared to pay more for a property than what an appraisal would say it was worth. And then when they go to the bank to get the mortgage, it causes them, them great problems. So make sure that doesn't happen to you. Make sure that you're working with a great real estate agent who can help you put the right uh, sales contract together as well. So the big news this week, CMHC, yet another announcement from them that they will no longer be providing insurance on homes that are worth more than a million dollars. And in isolation, probably not a big deal, but because CMHC had made some other announcements over the past couple weeks, for example, they're not going to be insuring second homes, so vacation properties uh, as an easy example. They are changing the rules on how they lend or how they insure mortgages for people who are self-employed. So that was a pretty big announcement. They also announced they're no longer providing insurance for construction loans that are used to build condo buildings. And so uh, the other insurance companies in the market, Genworth and Canadian Guarantee, they have said, look, we're, we're still insuring some of the stuff that CMHC is not insuring. So that's a good, good thing. But... Generally speaking, I think we're, what we're seeing here is that CMHC is positioning itself to exit the market. I'm one of the guys that happens to think this is a great move, incidentally. Um, um, first of all, million dollar mortgages, or rather, uh, mortgage insurance that are placed on properties that are worth more than a million dollars, apparently CMHC said it's less than 3% of their portfolio. CMHC is the largest mortgage insurer in the country, so when they say it's a small fraction, it's probably a small fraction and not a big deal. But the announcement does, again, it, it sort of fits the regular stream of announcements that are coming out. And I believe that, that CMHC is looking to exit the market. I think that there will be uh, a period of time where we won't hear from CMHC. Maybe they'll exit the market, they'll go quiet for, for a while, and then they'll re-emerge maybe as a, as a private uh, insurer. But more important than that is I think that the timing couldn't be better. If CMHC had started making some of these announcements when the market was, was, was dropping, um, obviously that would just compound the problem. CMHC, I think everybody would, would agree that CMHC certainly is carrying too much of the risk right now, that the Canadian government has this massive portfolio of mortgages that maybe ticking time bomb is too strong a language, but it, it could be a big problem for them if we saw another financial crisis or even if we saw a big change in the real estate market that it could significantly impact the government. So when you talk about getting out of the market at the, at the right time, it appears that with CMHC making some of the moves that they're making as of late, that uh, it's a good time to do it. The market is pretty much either stable or strong in many areas in Canada. And so as CMHC makes these announcements, not a doesn't have a huge ripple effect into the marketplace as it would if the market was experiencing quite a bit of turmoil. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that over the coming months, and year as uh, the market figures out interest rates, because obviously they're going to have to start going up at some point. Who knows what's happening in the stock market these days, but maybe CMHC can continue to sort of scale down what they're doing and find a quiet exit uh, stage left and maybe come back into the market to compete with the other insurers as a private insurance company at some point in the future. So what does this mean for you? It means just be aware of it. Be aware that there are changes happening in the market that home ownership continues to be one of the economic cornerstones of our economy and so mortgage insurance is really important to make that happen because without it most people wouldn't be able to afford a home um, but these changes are happening and it's a reflection of maybe some of the um, changes in, in risk now that the government would like to see uh, itself be removed from. So while well, the news is good Let's see. Let's watch if CMHC actually does leave the market peacefully and maybe comes back at a later point in time. If you want to learn more about mortgages, loans, maybe you want to know what you would be approved for, what interest rates are, who are the banks in the market that are even able to approve you based on the score that, the, that you might have uh, for your financial information, we'd encourage you to visit emilynow.ca. 
It's an online platform where you can uh, enter the mortgage or loan amount that you are seeking. You'll be prompted through a few questions and then ultimately be presented with some of your options. And from there, you can choose to, to refine those options based on your unique situation. But we'd encourage you to use the website. We have a live chat feature. So if you need to talk to somebody, there's a real human being there that can help you. And if you want to send your information into us and get a quote, we'd be happy to help you as well. So we thank you for joining us on this Emily Now episode, and we'll see you next time.